Yeah, that's right, you need a DAC. If you're listening to digital music, watching movies, or even playing video games, you absolutely need to have a DAC, which might be surprising to hear coming from me because recently I've been publishing videos talking about how I think DACs are kind of D tier in the audio chain and how they just don't really make a big difference. Well, hey folks, I'm Mark Ryan, this is Super Review, and I 100% believe those things. Those things are still true with one important caveat, and that's I think that DACs don't make a big difference, assuming you're already starting from a nice, clean baseline. But unfortunately, a lot of people aren't at that clean baseline, and they might not even know it. And in this episode of Waveguide, we're going to talk about some of the common issues that inexpensive common DACs have, how you can identify them, and how you can solve them for not a lot of money. And if you like the idea of helpful content like this, you'll also like our sponsor, HiFiGo, who is an online audiophile shop. They've got the latest IMs, headphones, and yes, DAX. So if you're looking to upgrade your own personal audio experience, I've got them linked in the description down below. But otherwise, let's learn about DAX. Pardon the interruption, Editor Mark here. I'm realizing that I didn't really elaborate on an idea that's in the back of my head as I'm making this video that kind of ties it all together. And it's that I often see people asking this question, do I need a DAC? I'll see it in like rev the comments of my reviews. I'll see it in like Reddit posts. Like, do I need a DAC for this? I think they mean the headphone or the IM. And it's kind of a funny question for a couple of reasons. Like one, it's like, yes, of course you need a DAC. If you don't have a DAC, it won't make sound. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but the other thing that's kind of funny about this is that I have to make assumptions about what you mean by this question, right? It's like, when someone says, do I need a DAC? My assumption is, you mean, do I need a separate, like a separate device that is a DAC and an amplifier, separate from the audio jack that is on like my phone or my desktop PC or something like that. And then the other assumption I have to make is like, what is your starting position? And again, because of that first assumption, I, I'm kind of assuming that you're starting from a phone or a desktop PC, in which case, well, let's talk about that. All right, before we get too far, what even is a DAC? And if you already know, feel free to skip this section. Although a lot of people think they know what a DAC is, but they've got some misconceptions. So. Basically, what a DAC is, is this. It is a little chip, okay? And this chip is responsible for this. It is responsible for DAC. It literally stands for Digital to Analog Converter. Basically, all of your audio, whether it's Spotify music, your MP3 library, your FLAC files, or even video games or movies, starts as digital audio. And you can't hear digital audio, right? It doesn't sound like anything. So what you need is a DAC, a digital to analog converter, to convert that to an analog electrical signal that can then go to your IMs, your headphones, your speakers, etc., so that you can actually hear it. So when I say that you need a DAC, I mean it literally. You need a DAC. Otherwise, you can't hear digital audio. There's nothing to hear because you need that conversion. Now, a lot of people have this misconception that a DAC is something like this, right? An audio file DAC that sits on top of your desk and uh, you plug it into your desktop and it outputs really clean audio. That's what a DAC is. Well, no, I mean, that is what a DAC is, but frankly, DACs are a lot more common than just things that audio files have. In fact, there's a good chance you already own like a half a dozen DACs, right? If you've got a Nintendo Switch, you own a DAC because this thing has digital files and it makes audible sound that you can hear. Or if you've got an old disc man from the 90s, this thing has got a DAC. If you've got a smartphone, even if your smartphone doesn't have a three and a half millimeter jack on the bottom of it, if it's got a speaker, well, you've got a DAC. Frankly, again, you probably already own half a dozen DACs, if not more. So why would you need another one? Well, to be honest, there's a good chance that you don't. Like I was saying at the beginning, as long as you're starting from a good quality baseline, I don't think there's major gains to be had in terms of audio quality by spending a lot of money on audiophile specific DACs. However, not everyone is starting from a good quality baseline. In fact, a lot of the common DACs that come in, let's say like a cheap smartphone or even expensive desktop and laptop computers, a lot of those DACs don't hit that baseline quality. And it really comes down to three main problems. Problem number one is hiss. Number two is frequency response roll off. And the third problem is output impedance. What do those things mean and why do they matter? Let's talk about that. Let's start with hiss or noise floor. It's another term for the same problem. And it's something that you've probably experienced for yourself at some point, which is when you plug in a headphone or an IEM and you hear kind of like this low level, high frequency hissing sound. It sounds kind of like You might hear it like at the beginning of music before music starts, you might hear it 
during quiet parts of the songs, or if it's bad enough problem, you might even hear it over the entirety of the music. And it's going to be a problem that's most significant or just most easily heard with a really sensitive IEM like this, but you can, in some cases, hear it with a headphone. And if the noise floor is bad enough, it can contribute to just like reducing the sense of contrast in the music, which can reduce the level of clarity, the sense of separation between instruments, just generally contribute to a muddier, less satisfying sound. Although that said, if like the hiss is quiet enough, a lot of the times I can ignore it. But if it's loud enough to become a problem, you can solve that. Now, technically the hiss and these other problems that are coming from like the amplification stage of your audio chain. So if you're using a separate desktop amplifier and you hear a hiss, that's probably the problem. But if you've got your headphone plugged in directly to your computer, your laptop or whatever, adding an external DAC amp is gonna usually solve that problem. If you're not sure also if you have a hiss problem or it could be the music, a lot of the times music just has hiss built, built into it. If you're not sure, I've actually got a test track linked in the description down below. You can play this test track and it's gonna play these like ping sounds. And in between the pings should be complete silence. And if it's not silent, well, you've got hiss. Now let's talk about frequency response roll off. Basically all audio that you listen to plays between 20 Hertz and 20,000 Hertz, right? You can graph it and it kind of looks like this. Um, and your DAC should be able to play all of those frequencies at the same level, right? It should just be a flat line, but a lot of inexpensive DACs will have roll off, right? Where there's basically in the low bass notes, it can't play them as loud, or maybe in the high treble frequencies, it can't play those as loud. And the effect of this is going to be, well, with the bass roll off, you might not get that really nice dig, dig deep kind of bass, that nice rumble with a good texture in it. Or here with this upper treble frequency roll off, you might just get a little bit less sparkle in the sound or maybe even less sense of detail in the music. Now, the real kicker is that it's actually kind of hard to tell if you have this problem because those low bass frequencies are kind of hard to hear. The high upper treble frequencies, frankly, a lot of people physically cannot hear them. And a lot of musical content just doesn't have musical content in those frequency ranges. So because of this, a lot of people can go their entire lives not knowing that their source has roll off, which may make you wonder, like, does that mean it's a problem in the first place? Well, I, I think it is. Like, I think if you care about your sound quality, these are the sorts of things that in like a blind AB scenario, if you're comparing a rolled off system versus a system that you know to be ruler flat, you'll be able to tell that difference and it will sound better on the ruler flat system. If you want to know for certain if like your system is ruler flat or if it has roll off, again, it's hard to tell, but if you're comparing it directly with a known system, that's one way to do it. Or you can use some software like Room EQ Wizard that'll help you tell if your system is ruler flat. And what you want is, again, a frequency response that from 20 hertz up to 20,000 hertz is just completely ruler flat. You want no roll off. Now this last problem is the sneakiest. And if you are using audio directly out of a PC motherboard, you are almost certainly experiencing it. And the really sick thing is you might even like it. And it's output impedance, right? Which is an electrical property of your DAC and amplifier circuitry, which interacts with the electrical design of a headphone. And in some cases can completely ruin the sound of a headphone. So what output impedance can do is it can actually shift the frequency response of your headphone, which is the entire sound signature of the headphone. In some cases, it might actually be in a way that's enjoyable. Like, you know, here's an example with the HBB Deuce, you add output impedance and you give it nice additional bass shelf. Now this might be too much bass for you, but you also might like this. So maybe you're thinking output impedance is good, but the effect isn't always like this, right? You might have an example like this where, yes, there's a significant bass boost again from output impedance, but it's more of a bloaty kind of boomy boxy bass boost, not so pleasant. Maybe you get a bass boost like this that's a little bit more uneven, but you're still looking at a bass boost. So, okay, output impedance equals more bass. Well, not quite, not always, because it might just reduce kind of the overall brightness and clarity of your IEM, or maybe in some cases, it can actually boost the brightness and clarity of your IEM. Or in some other cases, it might just make things sound weird. And that kind of is like the crux of the problem with output impedance is that the effect of it is pretty random and unpredictable unless you're like a headphone engineer. So because of that, for me, it's important to have a source that has zero ohms of output impedance. That way, I don't have to worry about it. Now, IEMs are gonna be more sensitive to output impedance than headphones on average, but they can both have their sound signatures drastically changed. With IEMs, it might just take one to five ohms of output impedance to noticeably change the sound. Or with headphones, it might take more like 50 to 100 ohms, again, generalizations, but to put those numbers into context. 
your average PC motherboard, the audio jacks built into that, might have an output impedance of 75 to 200 ohms, which is just, it's bad news. This is why I do not recommend using the audio jacks on a PC motherboard. Um, if you're not sure if you have this problem, maybe try listening to your headphone on multiple sources. And if it sounds bassier on one source over another or brighter or darker, like if it sounds significantly different on one source over another, there's a good chance that output impedance is a problem. And this is why, in my opinion, you just want an output impedance of zero ohms to take it out of the equation and not worry about it. So those are the problems. But what's the solution? Well, you buy a decent DAC, which thankfully doesn't have to be too expensive. I recommend to a lot of people who are maybe unsure about this stuff, maybe you're not sure if your source has these problems in the first place, is just buy a $9 Apple dongle because it takes a lot of that guesswork out of the equation, right? The Apple dongle has a flat frequency response. It's got low output impedance. So it's not gonna be like sneakily changing the frequency response of your headphone. It's just nice and clean. The main limitations with something like the Apple dongle are gonna be kind of with the extremes, right? extremely sensitive IMs, you will hear some hiss and some noise floor. So that's a problem. And then if you've got really insensitive headphones, well, there's not a whole lot of power coming out of this, so it might not get them loud enough. But there's other solutions for that, like from Tanch Gym, from Fio, and from Soft Ears. These are gonna have more volume and less hiss. And while these products look like they're made for, you know, using on a mobile phone, in fact, they probably are, you can also use this just as well on a desktop computer. And even if your computer doesn't have a USB-C connection, you can use a little adapter like this to convert it from USB-C to USB-A and get yourself a nice, clean, inexpensive source of audio on your desktop. Hey, it's Editor Mark again. And uh, I just showed you some alternatives here to this Apple dongle. And I said its limitations are that it is not the most powerful and it does have some noise floor on really sensitive IEMs. Uh, and I showed you some alternatives, but I don't know, I don't usually review these products. So I've never actually tested these things before now, but I did spend a little bit of time testing them. So here's like kind of a quick report. Uh, the Tanch Gym Stargate. This thing has parametric EQ features built into it. So it does have that over the Apple dongle. In terms of total output power, I would say it's basically the same as the Apple dongle, not really anymore. And then the noise floor performance was also maybe a little bit better than the Apple dongle, but not much better. There's also this, the Tanch Gym Luna, which has very similar noise floor performance to the Stargate, so maybe a little bit better than the Apple dongle, but not much better. And then in terms of power output, on 3.5, I would say it's about the same as the Apple dongle, but it does also have a 4.4 mil connector, which is louder than the Apple dongle. Uh, what else we got? We got the Fio JA11, which I showed briefly, and this one actually has less output power versus the Apple dongle, at least on my MacBook. And, well, I guess that's not too surprising, because it does also have parametric EQ features in it. I wouldn't be surprised if they're kind of baking in a little negative pregame there to, to avoid any issues. But in terms of noise floor performance, it was basically about the same as the Apple dongle. There's also this, this is the Moondrop, I think the Echo B, Echo A, Echo C, I don't know. It's, it, they've got a 4.4 version and a 3.5. This is the 4.4 version. I found that this is basically identical to the Apple dongle in terms of noise floor performance and power. Uh, and then finally, there was this one also, the Soft Ears, I think it's called the S01. And this one, unfortunately, was not any more powerful or any more quiet than the Apple dongle in terms of like noise floor performance or anything like that. But it did also like, it seemed to be like cutting off my test signal. So where is that? Of course, there are higher end DACs that are more purpose built for desktop usage. And a lot of the times they'll have more features, right? They'll have more inputs for different sources or maybe Bluetooth connectivity. And if those are features that are useful for you, they're absolutely worth the money. But if you're just trying to get good quality sound, frankly, one of these little USB dongles is gonna sound just as good. In fact, I think anything that's got like an AKM, an ESS, or a Cirrus Logic DAC probably is going to be achieving these baseline quality, these baseline levels of sound quality. But it is worth checking reviews just to make sure. The only problem is that a lot of reviews of source equipment like this are kind of unreliable. I recommend Audio Science Review. They're good for like an objective take that's free of the audiophile woo-woo although maybe they're a little bit too obsessed with specs sometimes. Uh, another option too is just to get a digital audio player like this, which is something I do review. So if you're looking for a digital audio player that is free of these problems that we're talking about, well, check out my reviews, which I guess is a good time to remind you to subscribe to the channel. And also thanks to HiFiGo for sponsoring this video and making Waveguide possible. I'm gonna have links to some of these affordable DAC solutions in the description down below. And while you're down there, if you haven't already, 
well, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, ding the YouTube bell, and join me on Discord, which I've also got linked down below. And I'll catch you in the next super review. Joined with the force of reviews, we now have the tools to brave the misleading world of audio fools. Uh, hey, this review is super. And so are you. Grab your headphones, sniff a graph, and share your thoughts in this pursuit. Let's get in the future. Let's just see how we're missing. Yeah, we're up for feeling. Bitch, need to sit on King and Fix.